Welcome to Tabletop Cinema, where we bring together the worlds of filmmaking, tabletop role-playing, and video games. I'm your host, Mikey, freelance filmmaker, tabletop RPG game master, and variety streamer here on Twitch. <sighs> and today, we will be playing the final batch of quests of the Final Fantasy XIV Endwalker main scenario quest. I'm not ready. Lishcast, how are you doing? Now, I may be preempting it. I don't know if I'll be able to finish today, but I did have a look at the number of quests left, and I do believe I have roughly 12 quests remaining. And at the pace I've been going, with the number of quests per hour, uh, depending on the length of each quest, I don't know how long it is, but I'm going to play as much as we can tonight. I have my coffee ready in a bottle. Water is around the side. I might or might not, so that's a bit exciting. Just enjoy what I can today. I just, it is just an amazing point where we stopped last, well, not last week, uh, the other day, we ended with this amazing scene. The parents of Moonbrida arrived at Bunny Con. I slept well that night. Two nights ago? What? Wow. Well, we don't have much time left. We gotta go. We gotta start. Here we go. Yeah. So the music... Okay, I thought it was a bug. But I guess the music is stuck like this. Because... <laughs> All the bad sleep, it did catch up. I was wondering what that sweeping noise was. Apparently it's this magic room. So immediately the music kickstarts everything. Just to remind us that... Just to remind us of the sense of urgency. We gotta go! Let me just make sure everything's ready. I mean, I get it, like... Instead of the chill beats while the end of the world's happening, I do appreciate that they tried to, you know, here, let's use music faster, just, just get it done. But then it's like, this is such a long stretch of quests that they probably could have, I don't know, like, maybe after this moment, then they could, like, s stick the music. It is just a bit long. <laughs> exactly. Like, I don't think, we never really complained about the one in Mongo. Well, at least I didn't. Like, but I realized at some point, wait, like, the music's still going. Am I bugged? It got to that point. But, you know, <sighs> still, I can't get over this amazing moment. Like, I was so, so happy and proud. I was always so proud and happy for Uyanje. And the timing of everything. This wholesome moment with the bunnies and Uyanje really leading them. And then, the perfect timing for these to show up and how it was set up and how it was edited. Like, it hit me like a truck even before they revealed their faces and their names. I saw this pair of Rogan just approaching Orianje and even from behind, I was already like ready to break down. Like, ah, uh, so well done. It's the hardest I've cried, I think, in the entirety of Final Fantasy XIV. Because it is also for me the perfect gap between Orianje realizing that, okay, wait, we have to act, I won't be able to talk to the parents of Moonbrida, then we kind of like put it in the back of our minds, but you know in your heart that, ugh, it hurts. Like, if only we could get closer now, but no, we gotta go to Thavnir. And then you forget about it because the final days are upon us, Meteon is dark Meteon now, and it's like, by the way, remember where the parents are, uh, where Moonbrida's parents are? Yeah, they're here. And it just all came collapsing down and I just couldn't contain it all <laughs> and it's just it's just so amazing ah. I don't know I'm gonna cry again never mind but yeah the music it's like I don't want to turn it off because they might switch at some point but it ha it is a bit they started it a bit too early I would say <laughs> the stuck music I 
And of course, I can't get over these tiny bunnies. Goodness me, I've never felt there was too little. Uh, uh, there is too little time before. There's so many people to talk to, so many things to learn. I'm just passing out. Oh no, you watched the VOD? <laughs> oh no. I mean, well, everything's recorded. This is the final expansion. I just wanted everything there for posterity. To look back on, for fond memories. Alright. No more time to waste. Uh, let's talk to everyone here, then continue on with the quest with... This music still playing. We spent so long gazing at this star, wondering and hoping, but to be here now, to walk among the people, to be part of their lives, to know that we made a difference, it's so much more than I ever dreamed. That's a singing way sound, right? <laughs> I assure you that my fellow Loperets are equally excited to have this opportunity. They were humming the whole way here. i go in first person to see them. I was so busy asking questions about Etheris that I never thought to ask more about Oyanje. I'd like to, but where would I begin? Oh, uh, you must be one of the Scions, correct? Thank you for caring for my daughter. The time she spent with you was all too short, but I know she was proud to have you as comrades. Oyanje too, is too, I'm sure. And I certainly feel better for knowing he has good friends to look after him. See that he comes home from time to time, will you? Comes home. Oh, I'll make sure of that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, then it's like, when that moment happened, and it just started creeping up on me. And I was just like, oh no, I'm all alone. <laughs> And I was just like trying to like look for my cat, so then they're like asleep. And then it's like, no. And I just let it all pour. Classical Rogadin isn't so different from Eosian. Did you ever wonder why we named a daughter Moon's Bride? And this is like, I don't know if this is a beautiful coincidence or if they really intended for it. When I first held her, the moon was shining silver and full. The whole world seemed to glow. I knew it had chosen her, that she would be a beacon of that self-same light. Of course, we'll later hear our fair share of jokes about how we ought to have gone for sun instead, with how bright and stubborn she was. But fiery as my Moonbreda was, she was always kind. Kind and gentle. Right, I remember, like, I vaguely remember an interview and they were just saying they had the broad strokes, and maybe this was one of the broad strokes, it's saying, huh, Moonbreda. Alright, this person will probably perish at some point, and we're gonna go going to the moon at some point. Let's have that connection there. It's just... I don't know. And also, the moon kind of has the same color as the white orisite. Who knows? Maybe it's just a tenuous connection, and it's just so clear now that at, in Endwalker, it's like all of these things. Like a beautiful homebrew campaign, just all coming together, and it's just writing itself. Pray assist Mr. Salise. She hath taken up too great a burden, like as not. Living Way and I shall attend to matters here. Right, we're supposed to help Alize. And Thancred was just like, Oh, and I have a lot of other things to do. Goodbye. I'm just wondering if Thancred's just like sneaking and bumming around. And I still, <laughs> I still can't believe the fact that. Okay, fine. Espionage is an art. It is. A highly valuable skill to learn, but it's like I thought it was a joke when you were talking about how he's like, he's a PH. Ow, sorry, he's like a PhD in in stealth and espionage. And now he's a gunbreaker. It also characterizes that, like from a rogue to a gunbreaker to take care of his. Surrogate daughter. S with an S. What? Why is that squealing? Karen, what are you doing out here? Uh, 
Tancred said I could help you load some boxes. No, I don't mind if you help with the boxes, but it's far from the most exciting of tasks. Are you sure? I am Eosia's greatest errand girl, so I've done more menial tasks. Well, I appreciate the assistance. We need to get these to Aporia. Time is short, of course, but they're full of organic specimens and samples, so try not to be too rough with them. Alfino should be waiting for us when we arrive. I'll see you there. Deliver the crate of samples to Alfino. You'll have three minutes to complete the task. Should you fail... I'm on the wrong scene. <laughs> Return to the starting location and begin anew. I can't shake the feeling that there are more of these than when I started. Did I pick up an additional crate somewhere? I have a feeling Thancred put his load here. Oh, that sounded so fucking terrible. I'm so sorry. I feel like Thancred put his share of the boxes here while you weren't looking. I mean, I don't care. Clip it, ship it. I'm... <laughs> uh. Anyway, we're carrying boxes. And I know I'm not a loperit, but, but being a Viera throughout the whole carrot arc, and here now talking to the bunnies, I feel a kinship to them. Well, either way, I just really. The lo lopers are so adorable. I was this close. I was this close to collecting Sylvanian families. But I chose for another type of figure, and then that became my dark. That became my black hole. <laughs> yeah, they did, and Orianger was spot on when you know I, his theory that mayhap Heidelin designed them in such an image, you know, to for us to be like, oh, Loperitz, to help facilitate that connection. So it's so well done. And even Heidelin, like, even before the Loperitz, it's like, Argos! The goodest boy. Right, I have one minute left. Carrying an object in your arms, growing warier with each passing second. Oh! You're helping with the crates. Wonderful. You can put that here with the others. I haven't heard much about the Viera. Like, I don't know if there's a short story somewhere that explains more about them. But I'm not sure if they... Well, I guess I'll look it up at some point. I'm not exactly sure. I just know there's the Vina and the... Oh, God. I don't... Well, I am a Vina. So, kind of from the snowy mountains. You have my gratitude. But how did you come to be involved in this? Then I suppose I have Thancred to think as well. If you're wondering why we were, at, we were tasked with bringing these boxes to Apori to begin with, so was I. It turns out that this is a base of operations of sorts. Those with final say as to what is included in the ship's manifest can be found here. Yeah. They've been trying to hint at the gravity of this, and it's just slowly creeping up on us. The fact that... You know, when we were talking to the farmers, even just deciding which fruits and vegetables to leave behind, it's, it's just so difficult. One of... Orianji's had a lot of amazing moments here, and one of my favorite quotes from him recently is from... When he was musing on the moon, when he was asked once more for another, you know... To do espionage and again, to be secretive again. And I was glad, you know, he finally, we were just more open about it. But, you know, him coming to the realization that he's always played that role. And what is that line? How do we 
either like fathom or contend or comprehend or deal with the algebra of necessity. I'm sure he said it way better. I'm not sure if they used the right words. But, you know, the the mathematics of it all. Of one life for a world. It's how do you deal with that? And it's reminded of a lot of more moments like this in other stories. Kind of like, hell, it's like, uh, you know, of course, like I just immediately thought of like Captain America and him saying, we don't trade lives. And then how many more people died because of that? And it is a similar situation with um, one of the characters willing to sacrifice themselves for the sake of everyone. And if you're put in a position to decide who lives and who dies, it's just, that's what they're doing now. Sorry, anyway, got off track there. Turns out that this is a base of operations of sorts. Those with final say as to what is included in the ship's manifest can be found here. Father included, I suspect. That should be everything. You carried all of that at once? Are you trying to injure yourself? Oh, hush. They're lighter than they look. And not everyone has your delicate arms. I suppose we should let someone know that we've finished. Theopoldin is in the courtyard. We can report to him. Why don't you come along? You should get credit for your assistance, at least. Considering where we are, we might even learn something interesting. Northeast. Did I just pass the... Ugh, damn it. What happened to those supplies you ordered a while back? Come to think of it, I haven't received them yet. Does anyone even use Chocobo Porters these days? I guess if you... Actually, yeah. I guess I... Could understand the appeal like you don't want to have to like be active while moving just sit back and relax and let the chocobo take you i keep thinking that i've seen him somewhere elsewhere but i cannot for the life of me remember when when did we well now i'm wondering This must be Theopoldin. I come here to think when I've hit a snag in my research. I'll return to work as soon as I have solution in mind, so please stop giving me that look. You're just like the person in agroponics. Isn't there something we can do to further fortify our walls? No, at least not without new materials, there isn't. Gods, it never ends, does it? Uh, what can I do for you? Wait, isn't he the... Huh, wait. We brought samples from Charlay and Hamlet, series 110. The crates are by the entrance. Ah, thank you. I had expected one of my colleagues, but we are dreadfully short-handed. Just a moment. You are fortunate children, right? Are you not? Alfino and Alizé are at your service. We are well acquainted with father, I take it. Quite. I've been friends with your parents since our days at the studio. I remember when you were yee-high, waddling hither and thither. <coughs> Clearly, I've been quite. it's been quite some time since we've met. 
It's good to see you again, wielding your father's newlets, no less. You knew a parent so they were young. What were they like? Pray, spare no detail. I should like nothing more than to regale you. Alas, I am meant to be in charge here, and reams of paperwork want for submission. We can help with that, in exchange for the sort of stories our parents would never willingly divulge, of course. Uh, very well then. There happen to be three sets of documents in need of delivery, so how about you each take one? And also, I must say, throughout the whole expansion, I've also noticed how much, how they actually delegate more tasks to NPCs. So it's not as tedious for you. It's like they help out even more. Instead of having here, here, deliver three stacks of documents quest. So no, just deliver one and the NPCs can take care of the rest. So I've seen that pattern throughout the whole expansion. Not only is it a boon for me, like as a player, but story-wise, it also highlights that fact that you're not alone in this anymore, or you never were, and that people are willing to bear the load with you. Wait right here. You'll find a forum representative waiting to collect these near the southernmost structure. I hope I haven't kept her waiting too long. Never mind Alfino and Alize. I'm certain they will be back soon enough. Who are you, by the by? The twins is minder. I guess you could say I'm their auntie in a way. Minder? They can take care of themselves, you know. Are you not one of the Scions of the Seventh Dawn? I thought you were meant to be working at the Ether Burner. Sign documentation. The nature of this paperwork is not a particularly well-guarded secret, but due to how dull it is to read, will nevertheless remain largely unknown. Uh, oh, right. Theopolden's paperwork. I was beginning to worry at Miss Place's quill. I appreciate your help in seeing these documents to my hands at last. To my hands at last. As for your other task, pray keep this between us. But I sincerely hope you Scion succeed. The Exodus is, without a doubt, the most monumental undertaking in the history of the Forum, and so we must be circumspect in all respects. Risk is a privilege we cannot afford ourselves. At its heart, however, Charlian has ever been a nation of the curious. It would be a tragedy, indeed, if we were the ones to stimmy your pursuit of truth. Thank you. Quick and efficient. I dare say you have a talent for this work. The twins' papers only needed to be delivered to elsewhere in the facility, so they should be returning any moment. We return. With not a scrap of paperwork remaining on our persons, you will know. You both have my thanks. And my apologies for sending you on an errand far below your ambitions. Why, even as a babe, you struggled out of your swaddling clothes and... That is quite enough of that, thank you. It is compromising stories of our parents that we'd ask to hear, to reiterate. <laughs> to reiterate. Of course, of course. I've known your father for so long. I must have some- I must have something. Hmm. Well, as you know, part of why the Le Valio name gar garners such respect in Charlayan is your family's storied history. You two can trace your ancestry directly to those who came aboard Yuncraft's Hope, a lineage few can claim. I never thought much of it myself. 
It's not as though our forebears founded our nation. They were simply there when it happened. Nevertheless, it has traditionally been a point of pride. Tis why Nuncrempf's pronouncement, renounce the ways of war and pursue enlightenment through knowledge and reason, has ever been our family's creed. Until your grandfather's time, I. Archon Louis Zoir looked not to Nuncrempf's words, but his deeds. He asserted, in defiance of his peers, that choosing to save the great and the small from the rising tides was a true mark of a founder's virtue. Perhaps it was his expertise, his knowledge of ancient prophecy and the fall of civilizations, that led to him to conclude that to eschew conflict at every turn was to consign mankind to his doom. There will ever be conflict and calamity will follow. Thus, to ignore the plight of those one might conceivably save is not wisdom, it is indolence. You remember his words well. Indeed, Archon Louis Wall lived by that personal creed and used every means at his disposal to bring succor to those in need, Charlayan or no. No one loved and admired your grandfather more than his son. Yet Fauchinor could not reconcile Louis Wall's deeds with the philosophy of their forebears and his peers, a philosophy in which he believed so fervently, yet made a pariah of his father. Fauchinor agonized over this contradiction for much of his life. Gods, father. A son may carry his father's blood, but his choices are his own to bear. Is it not always thus? Gods know, Fortunal, a cranky old goat, so I'm sure you butt heads often enough. Yet even so, you must know that you're constantly in his thoughts. Every moment of every day. And that is not an exaggeration in the slightest. You should have seen him when you were born. Barely recognizable he was, with a kind of dumbfounded grin I'd not since I'd not seen since he first took a fancy to your mother. He was practically skipping when he told me the news. Take my word for it. He loves you to an embarrassingly embarrassing degree. But he is so frustratingly single minded. Once he's decided that a given action is for the best, he will stay the course no matter who or what opposes him. A profoundly annoying habit when you're on the other end of it, as I'm sure you will agree. I'll say, thank you for your insight. When next we meet our parents, I shall mention that we spoke. Trying to get me into too much trouble now. I need the forum on my side. Speaking of which, I ought to be getting back to work. I have to make sure those specimens you brought make it to their proper places, or the cranky old goat will have my hide. We could speak again later. We were expecting like embarrassing baby stories, and instead we got that. Hail, you three. Is this Bunny Boy Hunter? No, it's not. It's Garaha, Cat Boy. Okay. Garaha! Surely Kokol hasn't driven you out of the forge already. For better or for worse, no. However, he has set me a task that requires more than a single pair of hands. And here you are. I could use at least one of you, but I won't object to more. Unfortunately, Alize and I have prior commitments and we have delayed too long as it is. What about you, Karen? Can you spare the time? Slash nod. <laughs> Perfect. This shouldn't take long. It is strange to hear father spoken of in such a way, but I suppose he would find your view of me no less odd.
Much as I'd like to press Theopold in for more revealing tidbits, we should be getting back to our tasks. Once forged, an unspecified task awaits you. In the event that our, and I quote, promised heap of adamantite folds right of the bloody sky and into my lap, Master, B Master Kokol wishes to be ready to, to be ready to put the proverbial hammer to anvil at a moment's notice. To fabricate these parts, however, he needs the flames in Kokol's forge to burn hotter. He sent me to increase the amount of ether being funneled to his furnaces. The flow of fire expected ether in Labyrinthos is regulated by an elemental reactor south of here, to which I have borrowed the key. The adjustment will require two people to carry out safely, but I can explain the process when we arrive. This is where we part then. We'll see you in Charlay and Hamlet once the Adamantite arrives, if not before. This way then. Slash me. Really are making the rounds, huh? Aha! Just a sec. Ooh, nice top hat. The reactor is housed within this facility. I'll be the one to go inside and adjust the fire ether output. When I do, a rather large amount of water expected ether will issue from the vent at the top. I expect this to attract at least a few elementals, which we would both rather not be drawn into the reactor itself. Trust me. Can I ask that you put down any that draw too near? They'll pose you a little trouble, I'm sure. Wait here, if you would. That's it. Did everything go smoothly out here? I thought as much. No major complications to speak of inside either. And the water ether appears to be venting properly. I expect Kokol will have seen a difference in his forged flames by the time I return. It 
since I have you, there was another matter I thought to discuss with you. Nothing terribly important, merely something I've been considering. Part of this I shared with everyone, yet you, and only you, have been to Elpis. As we have established, refined adamantite is a product of Alag, of the Empire's twilight years in fact. It is a material which saw much use as a part of the Alagans' efforts to extend beyond the bounds of this world. Dalabud, of course, being the most prominent. Of those who would push further, expand Alag's empire to encompass the heavens and the stars above, perhaps the greatest was its infamous technologist, Amon. I wonder if he remembered his life as Hermes. Hmm, okay. Amon wanted to travel the Sea of Stars. Do you think he remembered his life as Hermes? I believe he had his own reasons. There is no evidence to suggest that he retained memories of his former life. He only joined the Asians once the Empire was all but dust, as you know. If not his memory, though, what drove him to pursue the idea with such fervor? This may seem far-fetched, but what if souls, like minds, have a personality, so to speak? A natural disposition towards which they are inclined? Ooh, like the indelible ink possibility that, you know, the memories in the soul, you can't erase everything. We know with relative certainty that it was the gross decadence and inexorable decline of Alag that moved Amon to resurrect Emperor Zande. The Empire's people spoke lightly of death and destruction experimenting on those they deemed beneath them to fill the emptiness in their hearts. In facilitating Zande's return, Amon provided these languid souls with the means to free themselves from the mire of their own indolence. would have, had not Zande be conv been convinced by his own death that life itself was meaningless. Hmm. Amon's desire for his countrymen to conquer the heavens could only be a means to the same end, to instill the people with new purpose. Like Hermes before him, Amon was appalled by how those around him lived. He could never bring himself to believe that those lives were devoid of meaning. Hmm. And both of them sought that meaning, that hope, in the distant stars. Would you really say they had no meaning, though? Such is my theory, anyway. Ultimately, it is the consequence of their actions which matter. Their motives are of no moment, and yet... To reach those stars and wings of adamantite, to travel to the ends of creation and beyond. The promise of hope everlasting. That much I do understand. But enough musing for now. Why don't we see how Kokol is getting on?
I do enjoy these moments with Raha. It really did go around. We talked to these people already. Right, she's the one who read the memoirs of Count Edmond de Fatom. Amazing. I did thoroughly brief Kokol on, remind, on refined adamantite's history. I only volunteered to go to the reactor because I was finished and there was little else to do. Hopefully that dispels any misapprehensions that I was kicked out for prattling on. <laughs> I can feel those flames blazing from here. Glad you found someone capable, Rogaraha. But there's not much left for you lot to do. Lest you can conjure up that refined adamantite any faster. Bonds of Adamantite. Bonds of Adamant. Kokol Dankel is, as usual, worked up over the ether burner. Ugh. I do trust you to deliver on your promise, I do. Only. I hate waiting! <laughs> I want that Adamantite and I want it now! We, uh, share your impatience, I assure you. Is there truly nothing else we can assist with in the meantime? I wish this sitting about unbearable. Pity the forum. Pity the forum frowns and recreational explosions. Well, so long as they can't prove it was premeditated. <laughs> Get you gone. I have mistakes to make. In that case, I suppose I should. In that case, I suppose I should go and return the key to the actor. I'll have one more look to make sure that nothing has gone wrong, unintentionally or otherwise. Did my internet die? Hope not. I'm certain there are better uses for your time, however. I will join you in Charlay and Hamlet anon. I worried for a second because like things were buffering on my end. Any smoke rising from the building behind me will be entirely unrelated to what I didn't say. Got it? <laughs> okay. Coco. Aether current's in the middle. Wait, no, northwest.
Center Prabasa. And one here in Logisticon Beta. Ah, uh, I'll finish the MSQ, then go back with Aether Currents. Because I literally do not have quest log space anymore. If you wait here, your companions are bound to turn up sooner or later. Await your companions? Yes. All this. set, I take it. We finished what we could, delivered supplies, tracked down escaped animals, trivial tasks as they may be. That's enough, don't you think? If there was anything more important still undone, that would be a problem in itself. The vessel is essentially ready for departure. All that remains is to load the final batch of supplies and see everyone on board. Once we've readied the ether burner, that is. Ah, had a feeling we might find you all here. Our consultations with the Loperets, too, have run their course. Pleased I am to say that our researchers' concerns have, for the most part, been allayed, though some insist on making adjustments to the very end. For their part, Living Way and her peers have graciously offered to stay and keep the people company, lest any lingering queries go unanswered. You know, I'm slowly wearing up to that head cannon you mentioned. <laughs> no, I, I, like, I'm not too vain to actually think that's the case. I mean, what you mentioned about how, you know, Heidelin met me, and then the spark inspiration to create the Loperitz. Who knows? Maybe. Because <laughs> I didn't see any bunnies in Elpis. None that I found. Not anything resembling a Vera at all. Yeah, it only works in my version as a bunny person. <laughs> but see, then it's time travel shenanigans. Because that means I'm, I'm always going to end up as a Vera going back into the past to talk to Hydaelyn. And when you get to this point again, I go to Fantasia to Vera and go back. And endless. For that part, living way and appears right. Yeah, I'll own it for now. <laughs> there was it did also feel a bit like a homecoming when I Fantasia into a Vera and like, huh. I really like being a Vera. As any lingering queries go unanswered. All that remains is to wait for the refined adamantite. Alphano, are you there? It's me, Kryle. Your special delivery has arrived. Round up everyone and come to the harbor at once. Amazing. One call. One call from Alphano. Speak of the devil. Let us go at once. Uh oh, scary music. Forgive the intrusion, Master Fortuna. I bring urgent news. A great commotion has broken out in Scholar's Harbor. Your presence is requested with all speed. Is it the adamantite? Now, where might 
this delivery be? Is it because of all the nations coming together? Oh. I bet the harbor master is like fretting now. Oh, well, there we go. Without the proper permits. <laughs> By the twelve. Surely, these can't all be. Hey, it's you guys. Even the pirates, even the sky pirates came to help. Bleeding hellfire. They're bringing them by sea and by air. All these folks in these crates. It looks like someone in real life. It looks like Kiefer Sutherland. <laughs> Sorry, just because of the mullet and... The anyway. And more on the way. Got your adamantite right here. A bigger haul than any of these sorry bastards brought, and that's no lie. <laughs> I mean, it's not bad. It fits, it suits the Lala. It's just, I don't remember ever seeing a Lala in a mullet until Kokol came out. Yes, because you were charged with seeing the shipments from Gridania and Uldar here along with your own. Give credit where credit is due. Ah. Sounds like the sorry winging of a sore loser. An hypocrite to boot. Ain't no way a scrawny whelp like you took a dozen steps inside a Dalaman shard. <laughs> I'll have you know I went all the way to the entrance. Oh, good job. Furthermore, it was my contacts that enabled us to enlist the cooperation of the Sky Pirates. Oh, Let's he talked to the Sky Pirates. So didn't get anyone killed, did they? Well then, credit where credit's due, you did a right fine job sitting on your ass. Take that back. These two have been <laughs> their best friends. My, what a grand welcome party! Slash Eastern Bow, Hancock, <laughs> and Saraban. How are the auspices, Saraban? We come bearing relics both sacred and elegant, as well as a few other gifts that may be of help. To be presented with best wishes from the Eastern Alliance. <laughs> you mean Emana Lane and Sigurd? Oh yeah, totally. Our friends in Bosnia, for instance, have sent along a few artifacts for the brave allies of the resistance. That's you. I myself have come with a sacred relic of from race and temple. temple. Twas passing fortunate that Senri's dango craving brought us to Kugane. We arrived precisely as Hancock was making his arrangements. It's all thanks to Dango. Praise, <laughs> praise the Dango. <laughs> Sarban's English voice is funny for you. Yeah, I was about to ask, like, you mean Sicard and, and, and Manalain, right? Not Sorobat and Hancock. No, no thanks. Uh, I see. I actually never experienced the voices in Japanese. Upon learning of your need, we made haste back to Hell's Lid, with our Dango, never fear, and consulted with the other auspices. All consented to the lending of Tenzin's legendary Phoenix Blade for this noble cause. I thought that was just a fancy katana they put in there. Just to highlight that, yes, this is from the East. But what? 
Wait, they're, are they gonna toss this into the ether burner if I get it right? Like, they needed relics to, like, chuck into the furnace, right? To burn for the ether burner. I'm not gonna throw this katana away. What? <laughs> I'm a samurai. Give it to me. That, actually, when they mentioned, we need relics to burn for the ether burn, I'm like, huh, wait a minute. That's okay, you know, it's a blessing, it's an offering. I mean, in any religion, we, we do burn artifacts. Well, in a lot of religions, sorry, in a lot of religions, you do, we do burn artifacts for a purpose. Yeah, the relics, they do matter, Bloody Mary. They matter because they will save us from this final days. <laughs> anyway, I didn't expect this to be Tenzin's. It's just the Hancock. Of all people, I expected Hancock for this to be in like a display case and like protected from the elements. But no, it's just here, leaning. Here. It's disrespect to Tenzin's Phoenix. You know, I'm, I'm over it. <laughs> Actually, I do wonder, like, the, the, I do wonder about the mild, you know, the slight differences in all the cutscenes. Because what I didn't do, I didn't do Eureka. So I'm not sure if, you know, I'm not even surprised. I was even thinking of Rowena. The House of Splendors, you're going to find a way to monetize this somehow. The most efficient fuel for your Aether Burner. Available for the low, low price at Rowena's House of Splendor. Anyway. The reception as a Belizean Arsenal is introduced to you as Educa's cousin. Yeah, that's, that's as much as I got. That... Uh, because I remember the last name of Ajika. I did talk to the cousin of Ajika. The one in Kogane, but... I don't know. Actually, Bloody Mary, you're right. What's Rowena doing? Finding a way... Alright, so they're gonna succeed. And they're gonna... <laughs> She's already thinking about that. Like, once we win, how do I profit from them winning? <laughs> I do appreciate that a lot of the, a lot of the people actually paint her as the villain. She is one. Yeah, Ojika is a Charlayan cousin. Yeah, but that's all I got from Eureka. It's a shame because I do really like Kryl as a character. But we could use the auspices as help as well. I mean, they're like super powered animals. Imagine the Loperets. Meaning the auspices. Can a Loperit become an auspice? They've lived for thousands of years. Are all the Loperits auspices? Eh, thoughts when we win. Suzaku and Seiryu were nevertheless worried that it might be lost in transit, however, and insisted upon accompanying me to Onakoro where I had intended to entrust it to our confederate allies. Okay, good. That's why Sorban's here. You're taking care of the katana. I thought instead to give it over to Hancock when we chanced to cross paths yet again. But <laughs> alas, Seiryu remained ill at ease and ordered me see the blade into your hands personally or die trying. Hey. Thank you, Seiryu. We did, of course, need quite the impressive vessel to get it all here in time. Even the theater is here. And yeah, they do have a massive airship. Definitely it fits. Fortunately, our majestic associates have been more than helpful. It is an honor to join the Warrior of Light on another adventure, they tell me. Wow, how is this cutscene gonna play out if you didn't do any of the content? Optional content. That is all wonderful to hear, but what of the extraordinary cost? 
I shudder to think of the ransom we must pay for such a bounty. Practical consideration, but I hope... Or Rowena would charge. <laughs> Fret not for your coin purse, young Alphano. Lord Lollarito looks ever towards the profits of the future. And thus, the East Aldenar Trading Company went to some lengths to reduce the financial liability. Oh, okay. And since the Scions funded the entire venture, not a gill need be rendered up in compensation. Everything is already yours. Hmm. Thanks to Tataru? We funded the venture. When? <laughs> Thanks to Tataru. This coin keeper knows a thing or two about spending. Our hero. When it comes to capital investiture, a sprinkling of gill here and there will not do. You need enough savings to make waves when it really counts, which is why frugality is paramount. <laughs> Tataru teaching us to save. For when the world ends. We also have the benefit of a generous patron. Mm -hmm. Generous being rather an understatement. She has supported us from the shadows since the very founding of the Scions. Eh, we even had coffers to fill. Oh, right. <sighs> Most supportive mother ever. Millions. <laughs> I remain, of course, an entirely neutral party. I simply thought our family's coffers were needlessly full. Yeah, we did know they were receiving money at some point, right? From the family. And they were funding a lot, the Leveillers, through Alphano and Alize. But this is great. <laughs> oh my god, wait, I have to catch up here. How many years does it take to become an auspice again? I forgot that bit. But yeah, so low birds are even more powerful. <laughs> Thousands of years into those tiny bodies. Yeah, if there is a gill cap. <laughs> Except in combat, I guess. <laughs> I felt so terrible when growing way was like, just, just stay here. <laughs> We can hardly take them with us on your teeny tiny toy boat, now can we? And it would be a shame to leave all that hard-earned wealth unspent. Yeah. Waste not. Oh my god. Is that an emote we can get? However, did you manage so much in so short a time? Though? We expected word to reach only a fraction of our allies. Word of mouth spreads. Yeah, because fortune all, I, it's it, it's it also still makes sense because he's just so single-minded. He wasn't even keeping track of the finances or what Amelians was doing behind his back. Did I not tell you I have my ways? Yes, Tataru and Kryle keep mentioning this, like how they drag this Tinian in. Hello! Erenville. You were involved too. Oh, the cleaners. That does make sense. They're all around the world, right? I received a letter from Kryle after we parted ways in Labyrinthus. She explained what the science were trying to accomplish, and why you might soon require the services of the cleaners. Spread across the world as we are. I really, really want this backpack, Lamb. I pray you do not interpret this as a betrayal of Charlotte. I accept that the form's aim in pushing us to our limits was to preserve what knowledge we have, and I bear you no ill will for it. Yet, in collecting that knowledge, what I came to appreciate most about our star is that there remains so much we do not know. That is why I chose to help the Scions, to combat the obliteration of those countless, undiscovered wonders. 
I held no illusions that they would be less demanding taskmasters. Though, rest assured, if I had, I would have been sorely disappointed. <laughs> Actually, yeah, it's all thanks to Link Shells as well. They like added everyone in as soon as they could. And then they relayed the messages through the Link Shells. And tagged everyone. At Aaronville. At everyone. Oh, hey, company action. <laughs> Make a long story short, the whole of the guild ship cooperated to ensure your call was heard far and wide. They're here. What's this about a ship that can fly to the moon? See, it's a crime that only Sid is finding out now. And why didn't you mention it sooner? The one time you don't beg my aid, your problem's a bloody ship that can fly to the moon. <laughs> See it. You brought the team. Of course. Garland Ironworks finest. You need only point us towards my new favorite ship. New favorite ship. Hey Alpha and Omega. Oh, I nearly forgot. We stopped by Whirlit before coming here and picked up a package from Gaius. Oh, they stopped by Whirlit even. Oh, Alpha and Omega were in there? Damn. He's still of the mind that actions make for better penance than words, contrite or otherwise. So we offer none of the latter. Thanks, Gaius. What he sent is an elegant relic Valens used in his weapons experiments. Has a fair bit of refined adamantite in it, too. Hmm. Good. As you like, Boulder. Suspect, we've also brought adamantite for Mordona's Dalamud Shard. I admit to some consternation upon first receiving Kral's message. So few scions remain at the Rising Stones now. Far too few for such an expedition. Oh, no. However, the gleaners were able to secure us reinforcements. Idleshire's treasure hunters, not least among them. I know. <laughs> ah, the gobby prop fault. Even the, even the treasure hunters from, wow. Slowfix's gratitude for the safe return of his daughter has not waned, and he gathered his kin to our side with an astounding quickness. The clash between their machina and the elegant defenses was a sight to behold. I wager, even you would have been <laughs> impressed by the magnitude of the gobby booms. Lots of gobby booms. Fascinating as all this is, I fail to see how it explains your presence here. Does Rasat Han not have more pressing concerns? Did they make a breakthrough with Akasha? We do. Yet averting the final days would be the most expedient solution. That, and I am indebted to you. Though they chose to take their leave of Thavnir, those you saved in Galimund remain my people. My gratitude is beyond words. It is appropriate that I aid you in kind. If in the doing we bring salvation to others of this star, so much the better. You will recall that I spoke of my father, Midgard Sumer, and his journey across the great expanse. As he traveled betwixt the stars, his resplendent scales drank of the ether in those nigh empty surrounds and imparted to him the strength to persevere. Thinking they might further your cause, 
I called out to my kin for consent. Ashdaya's answer was silence, as ever. Tiamat and Chris Velgre, however, responded favorably to the suggestion. Ashdaha? My sire, too, stirred from his slumber long enough to speak and say, Very well. <laughs> Just poked them awake as a like, uh, very well. Thus have I brought you his own worm scales. Fit them to your purpose. And seek a worthier fate for us all. You'd be hard pressed to find someone else so familiar with the unique properties of dragon scales. So I invited myself. In. Yeah. Fuck me, this is so unbelievable. I've gone right back round to believe it again. <laughs> me too. We get a six percent gain in a fish or two. Yeah. We, this, we could get seven, no? Ten? No? Fourteen bleeding percent. <gasps> Think of how far we could go. What we could do with that much power. What we could blow up. Figuratively if speaking. If duly convinced, then it must be true. In which case, the scion's end of the bargain has been fulfilled. Would you not agree? <laughs> Hey, don't diss the mullet. Yes. Are you yes, proud I now? Or no, you always were. You just didn't show it in the best way. I know not what you seek of Hydaelyn, nor for what purpose you would take command of our ship. Get the top to hide the lint. Is certain. To do so will be to dictate the fate of this star and the lives upon it. The lives of each and every creature in their magnitude and their fragility. Do you understand? And are you prepared? We have seen and we have felt how much each life shapes this world. And so we are determined to abandon none. We understand what is at stake. And we are prepared to bear this burden. <sighs> then I... I will bear it with you. I beg you, share your struggles with me, as family. <laughs> look, look at me also concerned, like, hmm. You grasped my fingers with such tiny hands the day you were born. I thought my heart might burst. It was love and happiness beyond expression. Overwhelming. And a conviction so powerful that I trembled with something close to rage. I had heard the final days foretold. I swore to myself then and there that I would not let them steal your futures. Great Exodus would succeed, must succeed. No sacrifice or sin was worse than the alternative. If anything gave me pause, it was mine own father. The Archon Louis Soir openly decried Charlien's policies, a perspective which I regarded with increasing disdain as I grew older. Yet even as part of me thought him a fool, perhaps I also hoped that he, of all people, would devise a brilliant means to save my children. A naive hope, but 
stubborn enough that I could never bring myself to keep you apart. No, that was his doing. When he perished at Cartano. As we pulled that twisted slab of Dalamud from the sea, I remembered the warmth of your newborn touch. Chastened. I vowed never again to suffer any interference in my mission to protect you. No matter that you yourselves wished otherwise. Detest me, fight me tooth and nail. I would suffer it, and more, and be satisfied so long as I could force you onto the ship. <laughs> I was wrong. You two have grown so much stronger and so much wiser than I dared dream. You have earned the right to walk your own path and already begun to do so. Good. Because there are things we care about and people we love and none of them is replaceable. Not a one. It cannot have been an easy journey for you to have come so far. We shall be glad to acquaint you with the finer details someday, once this danger has passed. All that we have seen and heard, that we have felt and learned in our travels. Ours is not a kind world, but it is beautiful. Always. Quite sure that's wise. After all, someone turns pale and flees the room when he sees so much as an envelope containing word of your adventures. Whatever will happen if he learns what you were really up to. <laughs> Amelians. children most gravely I owe you an apology as well I assumed that it was the Scion's influence that made them so keen to charge headlong into danger yours in particular it is a legitimate worry I see now said influence instead brought them together with the many fine people gathered here today. In which case, I hope you continue to guide them. If we finish loitering about the harbor, might I suggest we put our plans into motion? People are beginning to look confused. Wow, it's like everyone paid attention to this. Well, you know, when Fortune all breaks down like that. <sighs> That's good. Everyone's back Perhaps together. you can spare a few words ere they resume the tedious lugging of cargo. You have no small number of friends and admirers here, after all. Oh, you're gonna make me... Mm. Oh my god, I'm not even dressed for this. Lend us your strength. A moment of triumph is at hand. Your assistance is appreciated. Now, in an orderly fashion, if you please. I thought I could continue that speech.
It would have been leading up to our moment of triumph. Unaided, we scions could never have gathered such a bounty. Refined adamantite, relics sacred and ancient alike. I find myself quite overcome. Lee sent a letter along with Gredania's contribution. It seems she traveled there to aid in their adamantite recovery. Evidently, journeying to Gredania was quite the trial. As was getting into the Dalamud Shard, as was reaching its depths. I suspect she will have a few kind words to say about the Alagans when next we meet. The time has come to claim our prize. Are you prepared? Hell yeah. If I never see another crate again, it'll be too soon. So I think Tancred did drop his crates onto the pile. I cannot wait to see what our friends from the Ironworks do with the ship. I'm so glad. Finally, it's like, it's about time Sid and Nero <laughs> came into the picture. I was really expecting them to come for the ether burner situation. But I guess, you know, they're, they're here now. That's important. I had no idea how massive a weight it was until... I had no idea how massive a weight it was until he lifted it off my shoulders. But more importantly, his words were an affirmation that the path we walk is the right one. A part of me might have been satisfied so long as my family and friends survived the final days. But to save this star is what we all want most. And if those same people believe that I can help see it done, who am I to say otherwise? Come what may, I will fight for this world of ours until the very end. It's very Alice. <clears throat> My throat hurts from directing so many people to Labyrinthos. But that could pr that only proves we got our money's worth. I apologize for not informing you earlier of Erinville's involvement. He was something of a contingency plan. Thank goodness we had him and his fellow gleaners to hand, though. It would have been mon monstrously difficult to locate Sid and transport the Hanish delegation here otherwise. Ah, look at all these warriors of light crafting up a storm. We finally managed to clear the harbor, which means the rest is in the engineer's capable hands. Meanwhile, Father has issued to us an invitation. As was agreed, he will reveal the means by which Hydaelyn may be contacted. We are to hold him at Aporia when we're ready. We are to meet him at Aporia when we're ready. Given the vital knowledge he holds, I suggest we leave without delay. It transpires, however, that the forum's method for speaking with her is not without risks. I am curious to hear what might those what those might entail, but regardless, be warned. Most of those who arrived at the Adamantite have offered to stay and see to any remaining tasks that need doing. The forum had already asked for my assistance in overseeing the process, so you needn't worry about a thing. Oh, ever dependable, Tataru. Thank you, Tataru. We're off to Aporia then. Bye. I don't want any of you getting hurt, but I do hope you'll wring as much information out of Hydaelyn as you can. For all we know, this is the one and only opportunity we'll get. Goodbye, Tataru. Well, I'll see you later. I'm not attuned. I forgot about that. Uh. Oh my god. I was so I was so absorbed in that cutscene. Sorry about that. Worm dad sleeping okay. It's like, just let the kids handle it. <laughs> yeah. 
you know, this may be the last time we're gonna use a Shuckable Border. Shuckable Keep. Well, I'm gonna use the bathroom. BRB. Perfect time to use the mount, actually. Am I gonna flex the Cerberus mount? You know, I've only mounted it once after we finished the Savage Raid. I'll use it at some point. Thanks for that. I'll be right back. What? Okay. Oh, there. There's the Chuckable Porter. Alright, BRB. And the music is still going. Okay, what do we have here? to the gods. We use you for the ether burner. You're a magical artifact. So what do you think about what's going on, Maya? No idea. <laughs> okay. Ah, and hydrate before we begin. I think that is the last one of that batch for that clump of quests that took longer than expected. But I think from here on, according to the list, it's just straight on now. Like 88 to 89. And we're back. Hey, are you doing fates here? <laughs> How's it going, Diwata? We are just about to conclude this batch of quests. Bonds, bonds of Abadamite. <laughs> bonds of Adamantite. shorts I'm in a shirt <laughs> oh wait sorry you mean dress up here in game
Karen, I've already shown the others inside. You will want to speak with Clarilane. She has the key to the lift. I can send you down after me. Wait, attuned to the Aetherite? What? What is this? What's going on? What instance am I in? Wait, I'm gonna teleport out first. Yeah, I'm gonna teleport back in and get the instance because I can't apply glamour here. I know it's not the most original, but gonna use my artifact armor. I'm gonna end with this. If we can get artifact armor before the final quest, that would be awesome. But this is the last set of armor we got from Shadowbringers, so. Also, it actually has a, has a headpiece. Vera hats when. Uh, I'm in instance one. I'm not sure why, but I'm gonna continue. Oh, someone in Maya. And it's a cat! <laughs> uh, for those who don't know, my cat's named Maya. Okay, wait, I don't know what's happening. Well, I'm just gonna continue, right? <laughs> You're with Master Foshino, yes? Just step inside the lift here. I'm gonna descend into the lower levels. What are... <laughs> Not sure what you guys are planning. Here we proceed to the heart of Labyrinthos and its most closely guarded secret, Thomasane. It marks the beginning and end of our efforts, whence we dealt to seek audience with the star and whence we will embark on our journey to the heavens. This way, if you please. my trusty Gaelic then. Shoot, we're at 545 already. Oh, ho, ho, ho. this is our starship? Bad so far. I like the curved angles, okay. Hmm. I bid you welcome to Thomasane. Direct your attention towards its center to behold the ark over which we have long labored. Hello, Magpie. I like my teeny tiny toy boats. Teeny tiny space boats. I will say a lot of the curves, it f it's very in line with something. Huh. 
Hmm. I already brought up Mass Effect before, especially with the Meteon arc. Like, that's why I remember I couldn't help myself saying like, "Oh, we're here again." Uh, Mass Effect story-wise, but yeah, okay, I can. I'm okay with the ship. <laughs> <gasps> and that's a Loperet meanie inside. That's a crew of Loperets. I think that's the best thing about this. Wait, no. Uh, this is made by Charlay, and we're gonna be a. It's gonna be a Charlayan crew, but we'll see. The Loperets are here to help. I'd like a Loperet crew myself. Magpie's been doing triple triad since last night. Are you gonna be getting the strawberry jam mount? <laughs> oh, I want the Loperet. I hope my I hope my brother eventually catches up. Uh, he did say he was getting Endwalker, but he was traumatized with the fact that he lost his house. I'm talking about my brother. He he lost his house because he didn't check in in a month. He didn't actually walk into the house and want. Eh. So he lost the house. So he actually stopped playing FF14 because of that. It still hurts to bring it up. He had a nice plot. In-game house. I'm so sorry. No, not not real life. Ah, uh, uh. Oh wait, no, actually, sorry. You know, now that you mention it, long story short, we had some problems with one of our houses as well in real life. But yeah, F14 house also lost. So that was painful. He quit F14 for a while. But I think he's back for Endwalker. And I, br I bring him up because honestly, I was never super into bunnies. But then he had pet, he had a series of pet bunnies, all starting with the letter P. I know he's in the Crystal Data Center, but at the, uh, he's also the type of person that, you know, he goes his own way. He's an Estinian, basically. <laughs> That's so funny. That's the first time I ever... But it makes sense. He's like Estinian. He's just somewhere there, wandering. Like, we we don't even play anything together. Not not really. But once in a while, we do. Hey, Hikaru. How's it going? Sorry, I was just admiring this ship. Not bad. It's like a mix of a... <laughs> I can't put my finger on it. So I, I think I gotta say, this is a f yeah. It's fairly unique looking, I will say, because I can see all different parts of the ship remind me of a, another sci fi ship that I really like. And it's all just combined here. <laughs> Mix of a sink and a bathtub. I guess that works. <laughs> and an Apple device, maybe. <laughs> Oh man, thanks. I don't know, like it took these. I only finished a couple of quests. I actually thought it would be almost done, but I think we still have a long way to go. So we'll see how far we can get. That said, we should continue. So Forshanot speaks. As you can see, to us the sign is a medium-sized craft, the better to reduce fuel consumption. Miniaturizing magics have been applied to its interior to ensure that the thrust-to-weight ratio does not place too great a limitation on its freight capacity. I love these things! Like how in Mass Effect, the Codex entries make it sound intelligent enough that... You know, the, the, the fake science behind it. But they make it sound so scientific that... You know, it, it helps feed into the fantasy. But to, yeah, using magic in this way, that's super... Interesting. The ether burn, as you know, has been removed for further modification, but we shall reattach it soon enough. <laughs> this is the final fantasy. I received word that Kokol and several of your allies are working on it with an intense fervor. We are sure to see it done. Twas by their expertise that many a prior disaster was averted. If anything, I fear they will not afford us much time for speaking with Hydaelyn ere they finish. Oh, 
Point taken. Let us move on. I must warn you again, however, that even with the benefit of your of our device, to treat with her is not a simple feat. Oh, the bot's on now. Wait, what? Ah, oh, hey, everyone's here leading. I thought you were like, just cheering, not literally cheering me on. This way to the ship. One of my favorite moments in any science fiction game is get where there's a crew and a ship involved is the reveal of the ship itself with music like this and just showing off the ship and then getting ready for departure. Again, I brought up Mass Effect again and it's just that. It's like coming back to the Normandy for the first time. Coming to the Normandy for the first time and meeting your crew. It's amazing. Ah, almost there. <laughs> okay, sorry, I gotta talk to these people. You feel it too, don't you? The ship is impressive, but it pales in comparison to the vast primordial power beneath our feet. Oh. To it seem enchantments most advanced have been woven into the ship's very bones. Wolf's son and Blovida were doubtless called upon for the expertise in teleportation magics. The Vera slash Joy can be like... It can actually be super... It can work both ways. It can be either you're actually impressed or just like... Sarcastic. Happy fate farming. Thanks for dropping by. Algaraha. It was the Alagans who first combined the mechanical and ethereal sciences into a revolutionary discipline. Given that this ship is nothing short of a technological marvel in that precise vein, Alagan salvage just suited well. You know what I want? So, okay, they're gonna attach the engines, right? They're gonna attach the ether burner. Then there's a compartment here for the G-Savior. <laughs> and then we're gonna have a moment where the G-Savior pops up from like the, from the belly of the ship. And we take out our beam sword and do Gundam stuff in space against Meteon. Come on, you know, one request. Can you like bring the G-Savior, miniaturize it into a small toy robot, and then just put it in my captain's Put it in the captain. No, sorry, I assumed that was going to be the captain, not this. I'm not captain. <laughs> I'm just gonna be a passenger on this ship. But yeah, I want like a series of G Savior models, and then because that's what I, that's what the Garland Ironworks have been working on, right? So yeah, just miniaturize it, and then just once they get shot out of the ship, then they expand into their full size. Then you have a whole squadron. Of G saviors. Uh, who haven't I talked to yet? If meeting Heidelin proves difficult, even for the forum, then perhaps I. Oh, uh, tis an unformed idea at this place, face, I'm afraid. I will duly inform you if anything comes of it. No! Don't tell me they're gonna take away Kryl in this moment. Because Kryl is her current. Well, our most recent beacon to Heidelin. Now I worry again. We must learn of Heidelin's greater plan. We can only hope that she also knows the current location of Meteon. And we can do neither if we do not focus on whatever trial awaits us within. Okay, we talked to everyone. I doubt this is what Erinville meant when he said that there remains much we do not know. But I still can't believe everything that has that was hidden underneath the city the entire time. True. Same. But it's like only in Final Fantasy, right? Who, who thought they'd be able to combine magic and, you know, fantasy and science fiction into this brand? And it still works. To think how many generations labored for this end. 
and that we aim higher still. We must spare no preparation, and that means speaking with Hydaelyn no matter the cost. I can well imagine the zeal with which they're working on the ether burner, and all I can say is that I'm glad we have something to do other than get in their way. Once it's ready, we'll see to it that the ship is put to good use. I've done what I can to impress upon you the gravity of what lies ahead. Are you prepared? Oh my god! I am locked out of the next scenario quest. This is anticlimactic. At least we got the ship reveal. I guess we're not finishing tonight. Uh, it's because I haven't been eating. What's the fastest thing here? Trial. What will get me this level? My next we bar. Uh, seven million out of ten million. MSQ, leveling. Leveling will be. Front lines is four million. Ah, front lines will work. Why not? Why not? Well, let's see the queue. Fourteen minutes. Never mind. Front line is not alive now, so I just need three. I just need three point four million, roughly. Ah, okay. Wait, I don't know how to paladin. Oh, okay, it's just this. Where's my food? Oh, I could have gone into a dungeon with my trust, but this is going to be faster. And we have a newbie as well. And I do like this music. Wait, what? Oh, it didn't work. I don't have confit here yet. No wonder. Reaper.
Good job, everyone. This one, you can judge me for this. I don't know why I keep... I can never do this guy properly. What's this? Oh. Well, I guess that they happen simultaneously. My bad. Well, there I have a bone stack. Should I even be using the magic face without confit here? Oh no! Goodbye, Bloody Mary. Good luck with your meetings. Oh my god, it's gonna hurt. Okay. All right, we're good.
I feel so bad for this healer. So sorry. As a raid wide. Awkward positioning. Not moving? Huh. Awkward.
Oops. Ah, I'm so sorry, Ninja. You're the ton. Reaper's so fancy. Sorry to this Reaper as well. I'll get better at positioning at some point. Avenger's daughter. Great wide. Head crusher sounds like I'm lagging. Oh god. Lagging really badly. Hey, we need to free her. Where's everyone?
Ah, my bad. They weren't freeing her. go again. Let's not get those four bone stacks. Well, one trial should do it. <laughs> I'm almost at 89. Uh, 430,000 XP. Korgol, hey, how's it going? Thank you for extending your subscription again. How far we've come. Thank you. <laughs> two fates on your map. Oh, we can do two fates, something new, right? I didn't disturb those comms. Had to go to the healer. Uh, this is so awkward. I got gated, basically, Korgol. That's why you saw the... Thank you. This hairstyle is quite new. 
Thankfully, I have a few FC mates here. So we can make sure this goes a bit faster. I cannot fly though. Well, I have this, sheaves in the wind. Kayo. I thought I'd I thought I'd be able to finish the MSQ today, but at this rate, it's enjoying I'm just enjoying it. Endwalker's so amazing. No, it's finished. I'm not gonna be able to get a part. Chief of Confidential Record. Document. Never mind, they're preventing me from doing this. No, I'm gonna pick that up. Ah, oh, fine. Ah. <laughs> uh. Just end already. They won't let me get the documents. This is so sad. Why, thank you. Ah, oh, right, Italian, two. What? Oh, I was in combat. Thank you for answering the call, FC. This is some awkward level. <laughs> like half an inch away from 89. Then continues the series of MSQ. That's a lot of XP, huh? Leveling wasn't enough. I am getting carried. See, because we're carried by our allies. We're all in this together. That's how we save the world. Friendship and love and really powerful allies. <laughs> oh, f right. I also have the journal. But. Ah! Well, that was. It's okay, I got some XP. Oh, I didn't realize this is a huge map. Right. Anything to get the level. I need 300, roughly 300,000 left. Upper right, northeast, not cleared yet. But this map, this exploration XP really add up. Instance three. Okay. Uh, three. 
I mean, this is entirely my fault. I remember last session, they were reminding me to eat. And I was saying, no, I don't want to overlevel the MSQ. That's why I'm not eating for XP. If I ate an egg a day, if I ate an egg a day, I would have been able to continue. Uh, level 88, well moisturized researcher. Yep. Moisture farming. Are we supposed to collect moisture? Ah, okay. Soma fragment. Ah, we just, we just kill these things. enough to hand in. Why did I hit this? Am I that desperate for XP? Thank you. Vexed. Yeah, I think that's the only one. We have XP bonus alive here. Hills are alive. 100,000 left. That's right. I think strange strange A lot of sheaves of documents. This should be enough. I 
think. Uh, we'll find out in 35 seconds. Yeah, I've been thrown from the mount. <laughs> Running! Wait, what is it? Here? Ah, oh, there we go. Wait, I think this is the wrong elevator. No, no, this is the right one. Um. Ah, it's over here. A four, yeah, got it. Yeah, I don't know what's up with the uh, stream. I'm gonna have to relaunch this. I'm gonna be right back, everyone. <laughs> 